Welcome, I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel. Today, we'll talk about the new moon of February 11th, which is quite remarkable. It's at 23 degrees Aquarius, and the two weeks that will follow it. First off, I wanted to say thank you to all of my patrons. I really appreciate all of your support. If you would like to become a patron and get access to all kinds of content early, as well as exclusive content, monthly Q&A, uh, access to the monthly Magical Elections PDF for talismans and astrological magic, just go to patreon.com slash Nina Griffin. All right, let's get started. So let's talk about the new moon. Now, new moon charts set for a particular location will represent the likely manifestations, usually on a collective level, over the upcoming two weeks until the full moon. Then at that point, the full moon chart will take over and will cover the following two weeks. Now, in the mundane astrological scheme of things, the lunation charts are kind of at the bottom of the heap. You know, the new and full moons are considered less important than the eclipses, less important than the Aries or seasonal ingresses, certainly a lot less important than something like the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which is very rare. Because the lunations come around every two weeks, they're very common, and as a result, they're not considered quite as impactful as other less frequent astrological or astronomical phenomena. Because of this, they are very rarely interpreted, at least in traditional texts and traditional theory, on their own. Usually, we look at them in context of these larger charts. So it's very typical, for example, to cast an Aries ingress chart and then to look at a lunation sometime during that year to see how the promise of the Aries ingress might come to fruition under a particular new or full moon. So what we'll do today is we'll look at this very special new moon separately. We'll pick out the key themes and then we'll relate them to the Aries ingress chart of 2020, which is still in effect. If you're not familiar, the Aries ingress chart is the moment that the sun enters the first minute of the first degree of the first sign, Aries, which usually happens around, you know, March 20th or thereabouts. All right. Now, the new moon is set for February 11th, 2021. And in my case, I'm looking at a chart set for Washington, D.C., but you could actually set it for any location of your interest. I use Placidus houses as always. Now, this chart has a stellium of six of the visible planets in Aquarius, which is amazing, squaring Mars and Taurus. So we could expect this to be a particularly powerful, eventful, and uh, impactful two weeks. So first, let's look at the planets in this chart individually. The new moon itself, the lunation ruler, is Saturn. And that's because Saturn rules the sign where the lunation happens, Aquarius. Now, how is Saturn in this chart? He's very strong. Certainly, he is in his own sign, because, of course, he rules Aquarius, traditionally speaking. He is oriental of the sun, which means that he rises before the sun. And Saturn, uh, as does Jupiter and Mars, the superior planets love being oriental before the sun. They love being able to walk before the king. And this is one of the reasons that these superior planets, which Saturn is definitely a superior planet, uh, often represent important elements of society. You know, they represent, for example, people who are wealthy, Jupiter, Saturn, people who are powerful, but maybe behind the scenes in some way, Mars, the people who represent or run the army and so on. All of these elements of society like to walk before the king. It's not always a good idea. They're not always allowed to do it, but when they can, when they're oriental, it definitely gives them an additional power and an additional visibility. So in addition to all of this, Saturn is actually still in orb of his conjunction to Venus and Jupiter. Now, this is a separating conjunction. Venus and Jupiter have already conjoined Saturn, but nonetheless, being in orb of the two benefics by conjunction like this is very strengthening and very what's called bonifying or bonifying for Saturn. It's very, um, it makes him a little bit maybe milder. It also tends to make him work a little bit more to the good. You know, just because Saturn is in his own sign doesn't mean he is more kind, right? That's not how it works. How he's just very good at being Saturn. 
However, that kindness can be brought by the benefics, Venus and Jupiter in this case. So this is actually quite positive. Now in the chart set for Washington DC, Saturn is in the eighth house, which represents death and loss. And I think it's a very good reflection of what's been going on in the United States with its extremely high COVID-19 mortality and case rate. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the different significations of Saturn. I think he takes on a more positive meaning when we look at the Aries ingress chart. In this new moon chart though, he is also very fast. And this always happens around the time of Saturn's conjunction to the sun, he is going to be extremely fast. It's going to be the fastest part of his cycle. So he's really firing on all cylinders in this new moon. And that's generally a positive thing. I think he is a little bit softened and I think there is some hope here instead of just getting kind of that pure unvarnished Saturn energy. Now, because of that, I am inclined to think of Saturn as a force that ends up putting a check on Mars. I'm sure you've seen my video about Mars square Saturn at this point, which related to 2020, but we're still seeing some of those same themes reemerge in 2021. Because Aquarius is involved here, there are six planets in Aquarius, the themes are going to be around collective power, as well as a discussion around what constitutes the public good. And all of this is associated with Aquarius. As I've said before, Aquarius since antiquity has been associated with uh, public works, particularly any kind of infrastructure. It represented in the old times infrastructure built by the king, such as drinking water, right? Aquifers, anything that the king would put in place to make sure that the people had access to clean and drinkable water. Now, there's going to be, I think, a tremendous push toward this kind of project, toward this kind of public good during this two week period. I think because we have six planets in Aquarius, we're really looking at what I would consider an irresistible force right? When you have six planets uniting like this, they're basically unstoppable. Because of this, you'll notice that the square to Mars is actually an overcoming square. An overcoming square means that it happens earlier in the zodiac. So essentially, all of these six planets in Aquarius will overcome Mars in Taurus. I think that in this case, Mars represents COVID, as an inflammatory and infectious disease. It's a very Marsy disease in many ways. So I think one interpretation is a powerful collective effort to counteract the health and economic effects of the pandemic through all kinds of you know, public programs and public funding as well. Another possibility, which is kind of a bigger picture thought, is we're looking at really collective humanistic values, right? Don't forget that Aquarius is one of the so-called humane signs. And these humanistic values, such as democracy, for example, public discourse, overcome aggression and violence, which of course is represented by Mars. One of the things I'm curious to see, and I think we'll just have to see how it turns out, is whether the fact that Mars and Saturn between them create a so-called enclosure or besiegement, besiegement by the rays of Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter. I want to see whether that's going to be problematic in any way or whether that besiegement is just overwhelmed by that Aquarian blitz, essentially. And you can have besiegement by body, which is very powerful when Mars and Saturn are in the same sign and they enclose some planet or planets between them. Because Mars is in a different sign, and so he's just aspecting Aquarius by square, I think it's just besiegement by rays, and therefore it's less powerful. So for that reason, I am not convinced that this is going to act as a true besiegement. I think Mars is still very much on the receiving end of a lot of the pressure from the Aquarian planets. In any case, like I said, even if the enclosure makes its presence known, I don't think it's going to really withstand this enormous amount of, of pressure. But as I said, new moon charts on their own is neither traditional nor I think especially useful. We have to look at them in light of say an Aries ingress chart. So if you recall, if you looked at the 2020 Aries ingress, it was pretty gnarly. It was kind of a crazy chart. You may or may not recall 
that in addition to having Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all in Capricorn, it also had Moon in Aquarius. Now, that chart is still active. It's good until the next Aries ingress, until the first day of spring in 2021. So we're going to see how this new moon chart relates to this larger chart. That moon in Aquarius in the Aries ingress is now conjoined and activated by this entire Aquarius new moon stellium. And what's interesting is that the planets in the stellium closest to that Aquarius moon are Venus and Jupiter who are exactly conjunct. Now, you know, in any, in any Aries ingress, the moon represents the overall mood of the time and it represents the people of a given country and just generally where the public attention is during that year. I'd like to think that all of these Aquarian planets and particularly Venus and Jupiter conjoined are kind of a signal of maybe a general sort of straightening out in some ways of the public mindset to a more positive and constructive way of thinking. We'll see. Obviously, this has been a very tumultuous time and I don't think there is anything that will just change that overnight. Nonetheless, I do feel that in February, at least the potential exists for people of all different kinds of nations, really, to start thinking more positively and constructively. Now, Mars in Taurus in the new moon chart conjoins the Aries ingress Venus in the sixth house of disease. So this to me confirms that in this new moon chart, Mars is certainly acting as a significator of the pandemic, of COVID, but really all of the destruction and difficulty that this pandemic has brought. It's economic as well as health related. What I would expect are intense public discussions, because this is a third house Aquarius moon in the Aries ingress, about the public good and how do we overcome Mars? How do we overcome the pandemic and its negative effects? The one thing too, when we look at the new moon compared against the ingress, is that nothing in that new moon chart is actually activating the Capricorn planets in the ingress. And that is a good thing. Remember, I think it was really that trio of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and if you use Pluto, really, then you have four of them, in Capricorn in the Aries ingress bringing on the pandemic. This grouping of planets, to me, really represents the worst of 2020. And I think with this new moon, there is a sense here that we have moved on. You know, it doesn't mean our problems are all solved, certainly not, but we're just not going back there. You know, we're kind of at a new phase. We're starting to look a little bit further ahead. Jupiter is in a better place, certainly. And, you know, we have Venus with us too. So it just seems like a more positive and hopeful and forward-looking period than anything that the ingress itself used to have. Now, before I finish, I wanted to mention that this new moon is going to be significant for a few countries in particular. You may remember how, especially when I talked about uh, Jupiter square Uranus, Saturn square Uranus, Jupiter conjoining Saturn in Aquarius, the new air era, all of those videos, many times I have mentioned that the next few years are really going to be critical for Aquarius countries. Certainly the most significant of these countries is going to be Russia. It has been ruled by Aquarius for a very, very long time. And in fact, we have found that planets passing through Aquarius have often impacted that country quite dramatically. However, let's also not forget that traditionally Aquarius also ruled the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Ethiopia, as well as different parts of Germany. This is back from the old days when Germany was composed of a number of small kingdoms, each with their own different sign rulerships. Yes. So this makes me wonder whether we're going to get significant events in any of these areas in the coming two weeks, starting after February 11th. Certainly Russia has been making the news with the mass protests, but there also has been a war in the Tigray region of Ethiopia that really kind of came up very quickly and it's proven very difficult to stop. So I wonder if a lot of these Aquarian countries are going to have to deal with a lot of disruption, a lot of change, in some cases, maybe even regime change, just because Jupiter and Saturn are passing through that sign, causing big structural long-term changes. All right, thanks for watching. I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel.